I'm Robin Clebett. Welcome back to my channel. Now, I've had a really good opportunity to take you back in time to a property that I feel I cut my teeth on. This was something that Becky and I did in 2002. We bought it and turned it from a church and a church hall into two houses. It was an epic task. It was the biggest thing I'd ever taken on for myself. And it was a real experience, but it was super rich of carpentry and joinery. There was steel work. There was, it was some amazing stuff. I want to show you everything in here before I say goodbye to it again for a little while. So the church was built in 1876 and the hall was added on in 1904. So you've got a really old Victorian part and then you've got sort of a very late Victorian part and this part that I'm in is actually the church hall. So it was slightly different in terms of how it was constructed but it was very similar to the main building with the big oriel windows and it was absolutely fantastic. Now, this is the lounge and what it was originally was just one great big space, a great big hall and it just went all the way up and into the roof and it had a couple of big feature trusses, sort of typical of a church, that supported everything. So when I came in here, there were still tables and chairs and it was just like the people, the parishioners had left it and gone on and here we were, ready to convert it. Now we didn't get the planning permission, the Methodist Society got the planning permission. It was a building that was now no longer needed by the church, just like so many others in the UK. And it gave us a, re a really good opportunity to create a house. And right where I'm standing is where we had to put a big steel frame. So hidden behind this pillar and hidden behind this pillar here is a super steel frame that I designed. And how it works, it's like a big rugby post and it holds that big truss because the truss for the roof, we had to move it all around. We had to adjust it in situ to stop the rules walls from spreading and by adding this steel frame and we've got another one hidden back here the post is in this wall here and that's how we actually made the structure work we also use the steels that run through to support our floor so this floor is completely new and it goes through and some really nice details came about for example where the ceiling met the windows at the wall the architect had originally drawn like a shadow gap and stepped the floor up and it was a little bit of an awkward detail. Now I wanted the floor or the ceiling to hit the wall. So what we did is we created a relief here. So as the arch came round, we mirrored that into the ceiling and we formed that with some clever plaster work. So that's basically how we did that. Now, um, the staircase is one of my creations, I designed it all, part made it in the joinery, obviously fixed it in on site, and it's all oak with plywood risers painted. Um, it was southern yellow pine actually we used for the strings, which is a beautiful material. I hardly ever see that anymore. Um, and so yeah, I really love this staircase. Our little daughter used to sit on here when she was naughty. She'd have to sit here like this, and then I can remember sitting here a few times as well. But there you go. Anyhow, so um, we also, added a conservatory on into this side here. Now this used to be a doorway, just a standard doorway that was punched through and they'd built an extension on in the 60s onto the side of the chapel and it was basically, it wasn't very good, it was just a store for book, books and that sort of stuff. So we cut out the doorway and we recreated it and then when we discovered that they'd cut all the face brickworks off on this side. We had to rebuild this whole wall and put in some new stones to match the ones that are down the side of the building. And Becky's dad, Danny, he did all this brickwork here, so it's really quite lovely to still have this property because it's, it's sentimental and it means a lot. And I do often say I don't, you know, I shouldn't get involved sentimentally with that property, but I think you do every now and then. So, um, there's a stone here which is blank. Um, the other ones have obviously been carved and we put those in at the time. And this one is gonna be carved and we're yet to decide what to carve on there. We've got some ideas, but that's something for the future. But this conservatory was also um, an afterthought. We didn't have planning for this. We got planning for it during the process. 
and it all had to be in keeping with gothic glazing bars, real glass roof, we've got a lead flat roof on the top, it's really, it's really quite ornate. And this is 20 years ago nearly, and apart from redecorating, we haven't had to do anything. So we're really happy with what we did in the first place in this property. And then we've got the kitchen through here, fairly typical kitchen. We've got a utility room here and a toilet. This was never here. So this wall I've cut through here because originally there was a door elsewhere and you can see one of my skeleton linings here. If you haven't seen the videos that I do on skeleton linings, they're a little bit further down the list in my videos list. And I do love a skeleton lining and all the existing ones, the Victorian ones, were all skeleton linings. So I take the inspiration from there um, and it's a nice effect as you can see. Right, let's have a quick look upstairs. Oh, one thing I will say about setting out, when I set this building out, it was critical to me that the lights, for example, there was some symmetry here. So as I stand here and I look at the lights above my head and there's a speaker there and the centre line of those, they're with the centre of that doorway and then as you look through, they're with the centre of the glazing bars, the centre of the mullions of the windows. So everything, as you're setting out, even way back in time, you know, when you're in the ground and you're thinking about making a doorway here, you've got to think about what, how relative it's to something else in the future. And all of the lights, for example, they all fall in the centre of a window here, and the centre of a window here, and so on. And so you get this beautiful symmetry running all the way through, and everything then runs parallel and straight to that as well. And then we did some nice fibrous plaster columns here. My mate Gideon came along and did that for me. And then we have some curved plaster, some curved skirtings that I did all that time ago. And we'll have a little look upstairs. The staircase was made partly in the joinery and because it was so lumpy, we had to pretty much put it together here. So I can't step on these new carpets, but so we've got a couple of bedrooms on this side. They're virtually the same size. We've got a bathroom here. Everything we made, we made all the counters from one slab of marble. We made all these gallows brackets from some of the oak flooring there, you see there. We just used some two by two oak there to create these like little gallows brackets. Um, we used really nice stainless steel pipes everywhere that you see everything. And I think that these all make a big difference when you're doing any kind of work like that on show. But this is 20 years old and it's still here and it still looks fairly current. So Becky is pretty good at interior design. And I think over the years, I trust her massively because she never really gets it wrong. Now, I don't really want to, to walk on this carpet, but you can see we've got this staircase that rises up there and that goes up into a beautiful walk-in storage space. So that's effectively a storage access staircase there that just goes up. And then I just thought I'd use the underside of it to create some storage. And there's an, air, an area for a TV in there, for example. And so, and the other bar from here is quite nice as well. It's got some really nice bits and pieces in there. Again, something which is nearly 20 years old, but it still looks quite current. I think if you choose the right material and you don't go too mad, you know, these things can last for ages. So, we're, while we're on the subject of setting out, here is one of the trusses I was telling you about here. Now, originally, this was at this level here, and the ceiling which was above it was, was virtually there as well. So part of the job was actually to adjust these trusses all the way up. So the steels are behind those columns there. They come up and they clamp onto the side. There was a metal tie bar going from side to side and that had to come out. Now, you think of the stresses and the pressures through the building like this, it wants to go like that. There was no ties anywhere else apart from on those trusses. And we had to come up with a scheme, an engineering scheme to clamp those trusses all bolted back with those steels going all the way down into huge foundations, pads in the ground. And we were um, able to come up with this design. And in this, back into this bedroom, you can sort of see it a bit more clearly now. So we had to cut them in situ, raise them all up, put some fabrication on, and that's how we did it. A uh, bit of a hard one to get engineered by the structural engineer, but I got him to sharpen his pencil and he managed to do it for me. So that was all good.
So the floor is solid oak. It's a solid oak, tongue and groove, random length, so tongued and grooved on the ends as well. And I can remember laying this down um, with my brother-in-law, Carl, who's also a chippy. We spent ages doing these floors and next door. And if you notice at the top of the stairs, I'll put some pictures in of this. There's some really nice nosings that we made all from the flooring, so we were ripping it down, molding it on site, um, doing all the joinery on site as well, and the handrails, mitering them all. It's just so much fun, especially when you had a space like this to work, it was amazing. We had our machines set up in here, and it was like a workshop. We were making stuff on the job. And we've also got, out back, a garden room, and we built that before garden rooms became fashionable, or fancy pants anyway. So this garden room or summer house we built in 2004 so we finished the house and then we got planning permission for this and we built this as well and we took elements from the existing gable the whole rear end and we made this the same now this is before summer houses were a national obsession and um, this is built probably better than most of the ones you know that you see nowadays it's got PIR insulation in it that was quite rare back in the day. We've got all kinds of other insulations as well, vapour barriers. And the garden was designed by a friend of ours, a good guy called Ross Allen Designs. He's an amazing award-winning like landscape architect. And he, I've worked with him over the years, and he was kind enough to design this beautiful garden with Bex. They worked it out between them. And one thing that was key to this whole design was a centre line. And because it's quite a small space and it's quite a formal garden, I want to show you what it, was, what it was all about. So, in here, everything is on the centre line. So the cladding, the centre of this cladding, the centre of the ridge, the centre of this tile line here, the centre of the screws on the Ippy deck in. This is a hardwood deck, 20 years old, and it's still absolutely perfect, like a ship's deck. The stainless steel screws all the way down, the paving all the way down, straight, 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 to the water feature crease, which runs up there to the center of where the water comes out. So that was before I had a laser. So I had to have a string line set up and set everything else out from it. None of the slabs were cut. They were slabs used in full sizes and everything was precision measured, millimeter perfect. But for something which is 18 years old, this garden, um, I love it. And this Acer here was quite small when we bought it. It was about this sort of big. And this palm was no bigger than that. And now it's super huge. So it's lovely coming back and actually being able to see our creation, the place we lived, grew our family, and it's amazing. And I think one of the bonuses of being a carpenter or someone who's practical is being able to build and the satisfaction that you get from building what then becomes your family home, it's hard to describe. And looking back, even after all this time, revisiting this property, I still get a really warm feeling about the whole thing, especially all the people that helped us here, who worked here, relatives, friends, and mates of mine who are still working with me now. So um, it's pretty amazing. And obviously, um, Becky as well worked extremely hard here with me to get this done. We lived at her parents while we did it and we did it in 10 months and that was quite an epic for me. I don't think I could do that nowadays, but we did. We had to. We had to get out of that um, and into our new house. So anyway, thanks for joining me here on my channel. I hope you enjoyed that little walkthrough of the chapel and I'll see you all again soon.